Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys are having a wonderful night. Welcome to the live stream. I know it's been a couple weeks since I've been on. Life has been busy, uh, but we're back at it. We have lots of news for you guys tonight. Um, an opportunity for some barrel picks, I think, coming up. Um, real quick, just to tell you guys what we're going to get into. Obviously, if you can hear me okay, say so in the chat. I will say hey to you guys. Um, let me know what you're sipping on. I see Tater Dom, Bourbon Hunter, Earl. I see you guys. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, I'm excited about tonight's tasting. So, uh, real quick, the first thing we'll get into tonight, um, while I'm giving you guys some news about the channel, picks, uh, charity organization, all that kind of stuff, we're going to get into the James E. Pepper uh, decanter. Barrel proof comes in about 107 proof. Um, just a gorgeous bottle. Love this bottle. Um, you know, I love the old time stuff. And this is kind of a callback to the like 1940s decanter, I believe it was. Uh, but we were down in Lexington, Kentucky last week uh, and did a dark arts pick uh, for Barrels for Hope that I'll talk to, I'll talk about it tonight. But Man, oh man, Macaulay is doing some amazing things at Dark Arts. So um, it's our first, the first finished pick we've done, and our members are going to go absolutely crazy about it. So while we were there, we went by James E. Pepper, had to, and um, I hadn't seen these local, but I, I think they have been hitting our market. So um, it was a $65 bottle. Um, I had to get it while I was there. So I'll go through some tasting notes let you guys know if it's worth all the hype. It's been getting a lot of attention. So um, you guys know I have not been reviewing as many things um, just because of everything we're doing for Barrels for Hope and, uh, and I, my new job. So the good news is I passed all my state licensing exams. I'm officially licensed uh, for my new job. So I had six months to do it. I got it done in two. So, um, so lots of weight lifted off my shoulders and I'm um, just excited about that. So uh, let's see. So Tater Dom, oh, Earl says, uh, the hype on the James E. Pe Pepper decanter bottle has my curiosity peaked. Yeah. Um, so I opened it a couple nights ago, had a couple pours and wanted to open it up before I get on and taste it for you guys. So, uh, Tater Dom, cheers, man. Bourbon Hunter, cheers. Brian Rasky's in the house. Boiler up. Yeah, man, I'm rooting for him. I wasn't before but i'm rooting for your uh for your boilers all right earl says he can hear me oh nice west side of champagne shane's shane's can hear me nice uh let's see john russell sound as well was able to snag one of those open memberships today oh nice man yeah so uh barrels for hope memberships there's only one open right now so we'll talk about that too um dan grayson's in the house yeah, cheers. Sorry for your line. I man, they got whooped. They had a good old ass whooping. Um, but it was a great year. Cannot complain. Um, you know, it's happy to see them win a Big Ten championship, get to the Elite Eight. They just got whooped, man. They were they were shell shocked. Yukon's no joke, man. So let's see. Um, let's see what I want to get into and talk about. Um, well, I guess we could start talking about the dark arts pick. So um, if you guys have not been to, or not had any dark arts, um, out of Lexington, Kentucky, they're a non-distilling producer. 
fantastic. Uh, a guy named McCulley runs it. He used to do, uh, he used to curate all the picks for wilderness trail. Um, you know, comes off a, a little aloof, but really smart, smart guy has a, a marketing a BA and a master's degree. Um, and you can tell by the marketing on their, on their products, the marketing is just as somebody who was a marketing major as well. Um, I respect their marketing game. It's really good. But when I see really good marketing and sourced MGP and finishing, I, you know, my ears are like, is it that good? Um, and I can honestly tell you guys that what they're doing is amazing. He is a fantastic blender. It's not overdoing it. Um, it's just really, really nice. So to kind of tell you guys the story, we went down there um, and we weren't sure what to expect. When you pull up to Dark Arts, there is, I mean, there are no signs. You're in a warehouse kind of district and there are no, there's not a single sign that says Dark Arts. Um, myself and Jeffrey Wack got there a little late because we couldn't find the place. But when we did, we walked in what we thought, I assume it was the front door, but again, there's no desk. There's nobody that welcomes you. We just walked in and we're in this room of barrels. Um, and, uh, they barrel for, they probably have some non-disclosure agreements. So I can't say who they were barreling for, but are bottling for They're They were bottling for a lot of people you guys would recognize, which is really interesting. Um, but we finally found some people that worked there and they led us up some stairs into this room where there were, you know, five or six people bottling some stuff. There was a guy with two monitors probably doing their like social media and website stuff. Um, and then they took us back to this room uh, that was, uh, you know, had a couple like um, velvet couches, a bar, really chill atmosphere, kind of like you're at your friend's house. Um, so when we walked in, my expectations started to even go down from where they were, um, because I just didn't know what we were getting into. Um, Macaulay was there. He was awesome. He had, you know, turned on some music, took us through their core lineup, which is actually really good. I was really impressed with their core lineup. Um, he had us taste uh, an Amberana finished rye, and I told him right away, "I'm like, man, I'm I'm I don't want to offend you, but I am not an Amberana fan, and some of the guys on the pick team are not Amberana fans anyway." He gave it to us anyway. It was fine, but it was still Amberana. So, um, he but th that was good. He listened to us. He's like, "Okay, if you don't like Amberana, I know where we're gonna take this pick experience." So, um. First thing he did was gave us a 10 and a half year MGP single barrel, which was, um, which was great. It was fantastic. Then, um, we worked into some like seven year MGP barrels finished in white port. And those things were like a fat kid's dream, man. They, they were, they were like bourbon candy. So, so good. Um, so I was super excited that we at least found one that I really loved. Then we worked our way to uh, a double oaked rye. I think it was like seven years. These are all cash strength, um, non-chill filtered, of course. Um, and uh, and the double oaked rye was delicious. Um, then he brought out, uh, I think it was like a seven to eight year MGP, 51% corn, 49% rye. So a unique MGP mash bill. Brought us out that single barrel and we loved it. It was delicious. The texture um, the balance of it. It was just a beautiful single barrel. And I was like, man, we might leave here not getting a finished whiskey at all because this thing is gorgeous. Um, and after we tasted that, he, he was like, you know, if you really like that 51, 49% mash bill, I have something that's going to blow your mind, but I got to go pull it from the barrel and we've never released this before. So, um, comes back and he's got that 51 49 mash bill finished in Oloroso sherry barrels. And if you guys know anything about Oloroso sherry, like you don't find many Oloroso sherry finished bourbons. And when you do, they're not well done. This thing was beautiful. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Um, it's the first Oloroso, it's first sherry barrel that Dark Arts has released. Um, but it's also, I think, uh, it's the, yeah, it's the first Oloroso Sherry that Dark Arts has released. Um, 
just beautiful. I think it was seven year, 116 proof, somewhere around there. Drank way below its proof, even at 116. It was uh, just gorgeous. So we we could not decide. We were split between the White Port and the Oloroso Sherry. We blinded them. We were still arguing. We had tasted 12 single barrels. We were just arguing and arguing and could not decide on which barrel we liked better. Um, you know, then McCulley came up with an idea. McCulley let us know that his preference was the Sherry Oloroso. Um, but he had a short barrel of the white port if we wanted to buy both barrels. So after we talked about it, we decided to buy the Sherry Oloroso barrel for Barrels for Hope. And that's going to our members. It's part of their membership. Um, so they'll get that bottle. Um, and it's so gorgeous. And then we got another 90-ish white port barrels. So we're going to, or bottles, um, we're going to release those to Barrels for Hope first for purchase. And if they don't buy, if we don't sell out of those, um, they will go into um, mine and stuff and whiskey and Dusty Dan's uh, and Midwest um, Mommy Valley Whiskey Society. It'll go to our Patreon members. So if you're not in our Patreon or you're not in Barrels for Hope and you're interested in those, you should get in those. So that's the cool thing about, you know, I don't really do a barrel pick club because everything I do, I want to go back to charity. But if we come across a very, very good barrel, we have the capital where we can buy it and then we can release it to our members if we want to. So that's very, very cool. So we've got a white port. Um, again, I think that's a seven year MGP, um, about 116 proof. And then that Sher Sherry Oloroso for barrels for hope members, which you guys are going to absolutely go crazy over. Um, so the pick experience went better than I could have ever imagined. Um, I just didn't know what to, what to think because I've been on picks with McCulley before at Wilderness Trail. And one particular one I was with, he accidentally microdosed somebody we were with. So, <laughs> if you know, if you know, McCulley, uh, <laughs> you know that that's a true story. <laughs> but, um, but always a great time. He is just so good at listening to what you're like, what your, what your palate tendencies are. And then he's just like back in the warehouse. He had probably brought out 14 or 15 single barrels for us. And then based on where we're going, he's like, I was going to give you this, but I can tell what you guys like. I'm not going to give you this. I'm going to go find something that you're really going to like. And that Sherry Oloroso was it, man. It was so good. So let me say hey to some more people that jumped into chat. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Um, let's see. Yeah, Earl saying, John, welcome to Barrels for Hope. Hell yeah, man. So cool. We just hit our our first year at Barrels for Hope. Um, just started our second year of picks and uh, getting ready to have our year-end event in July. Fred Minnick's going to be there. Jason C. with Mash and Drum is going to MC, And we're going to be giving $40,000 to charity um, from the revenue that we generated from our barrel picks. And that is all thanks to A1 and Rav, um, A1 Liquors in Effingham. We're able to get barrels at cost and then all the profits go back to charity. So we don't make a dime. Um, it all goes back to charity and it's very, very exciting. So uh, show me the proof said cheers to the Illini women. Yeah, they won the tournament they're in. So very cool. Very cool. Um, uh, oh, he's been following for a couple months. Love what it's all about. Yeah, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. One of my favorite guys in the world, Brad Key. What's up, buddy? Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. All right. So first thing we're tasting tonight is this James E. Pepper decanter. So uh, a couple things on it. First, the bottle's beautiful. Um, let me go to my notes here. I don't think the mash bill, the mash bill is undisclosed as far as I could tell. There's nothing on the website. I don't know what the mash bill is. Um, lady at the gift shop told me it was five and a half years, 107 proof, $65 bottle. Um, let's get into the nose and see what we smell here. Oh, the nose is gorgeous on it. I love a hundred. I'm my sweet spot right now is at hundred to 110 proof. Um, so this is in my, in my wheelhouse, but it is a butterscotch for days on the nose. 
deep, rich, like um, vanilla beans, but like like a vanilla whipped cream or something. And then there's just like uh, caramel corn, caramel buttered corn. It's really, really a pleasant nose. Very beautiful. Very beautiful on the nose. Uh, let's see. Jason's in the house. What's up, man? Cards one. Doesn't sound like you had anything bad besides Amberana. Trying to think. Did we have anything bad? Oh, one interesting barrel he brought out. Uh, he brought out, he goes, he's like, I, I want you guys to taste this. This is, uh, you know, definitely off the beaten path, but I want you guys to taste it and tell me what it, what you think it is. So he brings out this, uh, he goes in the Rick house, comes back with a, with another, you know, pitcher of, of um, bourbon and uh pours it for us and i tasted it and it tasted i said it tastes like a finished irish whiskey to me and he kind of smiled and looked back and one of the guys you know was saying oh it doesn't taste like an irish whiskey at all i'm like man it tastes it's irish i'm pretty sure and it was very light colored um anyway turns out it was a um a single malt he had bought some single malts from um, a legacy distillery in Kentucky. He couldn't disclose which one it was, but um, it was a single malt that was uh, made in pot stills. So, I mean, basically an Irish whiskey. It just wasn't made in Ireland. And then it was finished in um, um, red port barrel. No, not red port. Uh, red, uh, red ale barrels. So it was a single malt. Kentucky distillery finished in red ale barrels. And it was really good, man. I think it was a little too out of bounds for a lot of picks, but um, it would have been really interesting to do for, for Barrels for Hope since we have a lot of like whiskey connoisseurs in there. But I'm not sure what they would have thought about it. Um, but, you know, some of the guys that have had a lot of single malts and single malts are getting big, um, thought it was one of the better single malts they've had. So, he is not afraid. He's doing some really cool, interesting stuff. And I thought that was... I. So to answer your question, no, I didn't have anything I didn't like except the Amberana, but that's just me. I just do not like Amberana. It tastes like um, like cinnamon cat piss or uh, my uncle described it best. You know, we my grandfather had horses and he had this horse fly spray called Tail and Mane, I think is what it's called. But um, when I taste Amberana finished stuff, man, it... It tastes just like that horse fly spray used to smell. So um, yeah, let's see. Corn and whiskey's in the house. Woot to the dark arts. Man, the place is so cool. Um, well, doing good things. So um, they're, you know, they're just starting out. So stepping stones. Um, uh, but I'm excited to see what's what they do. Whiskey Nose is in the house. What's up, dude? Uh, Brad Key, yeah, man, Bama is in the final four for the first time. Got to play the beast. Yeah, to quote Ric Flair, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Going to be tough. Yeah, since when did Bama become a basketball school, man? It's pretty exciting, though. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I really want to see UConn Purdue in the final, and I want to see Purdue win just because it's Big Ten. But I don't know if anyone can take down UConn, man. Oh, this Jamesy Pepper is beautiful on the nose. I'm going to go for the taste. Cheers, everybody. I think the nose is better than the palate. It's got some spice, man. It's got some spice to it for 107 proof. I feel like it's definitely a high rye bourbon. Um, let's see what else is going on in here. <laughs> Jason said, good luck. Illinois found out. Yeah, no joke, man. Jeremy Banks is in the house. What's up, dude? Cheers, man. Uh, Johnny five says any hope for our cards this year, Lance. So I'm going to be a hundred percent honest with you, man. Since since uh, they stopped playing all the Cardinal games on TV, I just don't follow them as much. I I just you know I don't buy the additional channels and um, I miss it. I need to I need to follow up. The only thing I've really been like my nose in one hundred and ten percent is Illini basketball. Um, I've stopped even watching. 
I don't watch a lot of NFL anymore. Um, a little bit of college football, um, but baseball, I just, I just have not watched near enough. So I, I could not tell you. Jason in the chat, he would definitely know. He was at opening day today. He sent me a picture. Um, but yeah, I just, I think, I think the Major League Baseball is doing a real disservice not, not airing those games on regular TV as much because. Last year, I don't think I watched a game, which, um, you know, I used to be the biggest Cardinal fan ever. So, um, Jeremy Banks, welcome to the group, John. Been here since day one and have loved everything it stands for. Yeah, Jeremy has been here day, since day one. Uh, David, congrats, passing exams, license for work. Cheers. Yeah, thanks, dude. Yeah, it's a... It's a relief, man. It's a relief. So we're going to finish tasting this James E. Pepper. I'm going to take a second sip, and then we're going to go through Four Roses because we have a Four Roses pick next Friday that we're going on. So, That second, that second taste was better. Um, in my head, I don't know how close this is, I mean, this is good. I don't think I'm not as crazy about it as some of the some of the reviews I've seen. It's a little grain forward. They, I'm not not crafty. It doesn't taste crafty, but there is you can taste that corn in it. Um, there is some like maybe some cinnamon. Um, the vanilla comes through a little bit, but it's more on the nose. And I wish that butterscotch that's on that's on the nose came through a bit more on the palate. Um, there's not heavy, dense oak. It's more of a light oak, which you would kind of expect with a five and a half year. What's kind of surprising me is the spice. The spice on it uh, is obviously from the rye. Um, it's not the proof, so it's uh, it's got some it's got some spice to it. Yeah, the butterscotch is there, actually, on the palate. Yeah, butterscotch, caramel corn. I'm trying to see if I pick up any fruit. Let me look through chat here, and I'll take one more sip of this. Um, is it worth $65? Man. <clears throat> you know what you know would be good to taste this against? is the um the holiday soft red wheat um two different animals but the flavor profile is kind of the same to me um and the only reason i'm saying to taste those together is because that that holiday soft red wheat i think is 50 bucks and in my head i think i like it more um but that that may be crazy i haven't had that bottle in a while uh brad key barrels for hope giving forty thousand to charity this year first year proud to be a part of this group thanks man i'm i'm so thankful for all you guys that are in it yeah giving forty thousand to charity our first year um we hit every goal man we hit every goal we got all the bottles shipped out um our year-end event is going to be amazing i cannot wait for that so if you guys don't know and want to see Barrels for Hope, you can just go to barrelsforhope.com. Uh, I actually did some updating on the site today. Um, you can read about what we're doing there. But um, All right, let's see. One more sip here. Let me see if I can find any fruit. There is, um, mm, there is some peach. There is some peach on that. So let's see. Cinnamon, some peaches, some light oak, rice spice on the palate, a little bit of butterscotch. Yeah, it's it's uh it's definitely worth $65, I think. Um, I wasn't finding the fruit notes initially, but it's there. Um I think a lot of people are gonna love that. I can see why a lot of people love it. Um if you miss out on it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have FOMO over it, but uh, it's good. It's a beautiful bottle. Um, glad I have it, but wasn't the end of the world. Uh, let's see if I didn't get it. Brad said Narav is the man. Yeah, Narav, you know, Narav doesn't get enough credit. He sits, he, you know, doesn't say much, uh, but 
I came to him when I had the idea for Barrels for Hope and said, hey, this is what, I, what I'm thinking. He said, what do you need? Um, he said, yeah, I can sell you six barrels that cost a year. Um, this is how much you should be able to raise for charity. And, um, you know, he's, he's dead on with his numbers. So that's, I mean, exactly, pretty much exactly what we were able to raise for our first year. So, um, let's see. Earl said, the wife and I visited James E. Pepper distillery a few years back. Every time I sampled was youthful and grainy. So I wonder what they're doing different with the decanter bottle. Um, I would still say it's grainy, Earl. Um, at five and a half years, I'm still tasting corn, uh, you know, a lot of that corn grain. Uh, but, um, I don't know, maybe it's just a little bit older. So I don't know how old the stuff you were tasting was, but, um, yeah, it's good. It's not knock your socks off which I think I've seen some reviews. People are just going nuts over it. So um, if I if I were reviewing that with my scoring system, I would put it as bar worthy based on the price, based on the palate and the, and the nose. Um, it's got a good long finish because of that rye spice. That finish is, is pretty long, um, but it's not going to blow you away. It's definitely not like bunker worthy in my opinion. So there's a lot of bourbons out on the market just as good. Um, Mark said, I just left Aspen tap. See you in 10 minutes. <laughs> nice man. See, are you in champagne, Mark? I think that means you're in champagne. You should have called me, man. Um, bourbon hunter. I have a Jack Daniels single malt. Haven't opened it yet. Any thoughts? I'm, I never had it, man. I'm, you know, not super big on, on single malts. Uh, but the single malt that we had at, um, at Dark Arts was really good. Um, oh, Shane's tasting the Jamesy e. Pepper. Just took a sip of Jamesy e. Pepper. I agree. Nose slightly better than the palate. Definitely a rye taste picked up from a small store in Urbana. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely a bar worthy bottle. It's just um, not going to blow you away. Uh, um. Shane, oh, Top Dog, are we a go for Monday? I believe so. I'm, I am. So Top Dog and I are partners on Dusty Dan's channel um, and a little competition he's doing that's taken a year to finish. <laughs> so uh, we've got a. I think we, I think we're doing it Monday. So, oh, Shane says soft red wheat is better. Well, you're gonna make me taste it, aren't you? We got to do this. Uh, where are we at? Twenty seven minutes. Let's see. Uh, I did want to tell you guys about some upcoming picks. So um, next Friday, we are going to Four Roses, which is why we're going to taste through some Four Roses picks tonight to get ready for that. Um, I've only got four different Four Roses picks right now. So uh, one's an OESK, one's an OBSV, one's an OBSQ, and one's an OBSF. Um, I'll go over what those mean for those that don't know. Um, but we'll taste through those tonight. I've poured them in the glass. They're opening up. Um, but for Barrels for Hope, <clears throat> since we're a charity organization, we were able to get um, our first uh, Four Roses barrel. So I'm so excited about that. So if you're in Barrels for Hope, um, that will not be one of the six picks we do in a year because basically we have to have 140 bottles so we can give one to each of our members and four roses barrels typically yield about 110 bottles so we're probably not going to have enough for all the members so what we do is we just do a randomizer we put everybody's name in just do a randomizer and if we have 90 bottles the first 90 names that come up uh get to purchase a bottle and then the proceeds of that go back to charity so um so Huge thank you to Kim Schwartz, who is our event director on our board of directors, who was able to um, talk to Four Roses and has that connection and got us a barrel. And thanks to Four Roses for giving us a barrel. That's super cool of them. Um, we're excited to bring it to our members. So, um, Let's see. Have we given any thought to getting 
the Rob some type. Oh, I think you said Narav. Um, some type of gift at the year end banquet. Um, the short answer is of course, but I can't say anything. And I don't. <laughs> if Narav's watching this, I don't want to say anything. So I'll ask those kind of questions, man. <laughs> Semi private chat. <laughs> uh, Kim's in the house. What's up, Kim? I was just talking about you. Cheers. Um, hey, Lance, hopping in a little late. Cheers, Corey. Cheers, man. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. I already answered that. All right. All right. Let's get into this four roses tasting. I'm excited about it. So, uh, oh, uh, other picks we're doing. So four roses. Um, then we have in May, uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is going to be May 20th. So that was the first pick we did with Barrels for Hope. So we're going to be doing another Elijah Craig Barrel Proof pick because the barrels they rolled out for us were fantastic. Um, and then this is the exciting news we just found out today. We are doing a Ben Holiday pick. So we're going to go to Missouri probably in July or August, um, we'll be doing a Ben Holiday pick. Um, at our year-end event in July, we're doing a Starlight pick. That isn't a pick that's in with your membership. That's going to be an additional pick, but um, we're going to have the 100 people that are at our year-end event. We're taking buses from Louisville to Starlight, and uh, we're doing a barrel pick with 100 people at Starlight. So um, it's going to be absolutely insane. I cannot wait for that. Um, it's just going to be, it's just gonna be such a good time. Highlight of my year for sure. So dark arts, four roses, Elijah Craig, barrel proof, Ben holiday, starlight. We're, we're just, we're killing it, man. I'm so proud of everybody on our board and, um, uh, everybody that's helping out with this and Rav and all of you members, cause it's not possible without you guys. So thank you. Um, and if you're wanting to get in barrels for hope again, we have one membership open right now. Um, if you want to, help the channel you can go to patreon for whiskey tornado there will be some of those white port barrels available you can join my patreon for as little as two dollars a month so um but um all right all right so for those that don't know um four roses so they all start with o and o just means it's produced of four roses um the second letter is either going to be an e or a b the e is the 75 percent corn mash bill, uh, 20% rye. The B is the 60% corn, 35% rye. So only one I have is an OE, um, and that is a pick that I was on with A1, and I am freaking in love with that pick. So, um, And then you have the, the S. The S is on all of them, and the S is just for straight uh, whiskey. That's all that means, straight whiskey distillate. Um, and the last letter is the yeast strain. So um, you either have K, which is a, supposed to be spicy, full-bodied. You have a Q, which is fruity, spicy, medium-bodied. O, which is floral, rose petal, spicy. F, which is herbal. And V, which is delicate fruit. Now, when I go on Four Roses Picks, my palate tends to not like the herbal, minty things. So um, if it's a little bit higher rye and herbal, I'm kind of out on it for my palate. Um, I love the fruity, the fruity four roses picks are for me. So, um, with that being said, the first one we have is an OESK. So we have the 75% corn, um, and the yeast strain is spicy, full bodied, but I don't find that on this pick at all. I mean, it is full bodied, but I find more fruit, honestly. The second one I have is, and that pick is 10 years, six months, comes in at 111 proof. Second bottle we're going to be tasting is an OBSV, and I'll go over these again as I'm tasting them, but OBSV, so you've got the higher higher rye and, um, and the delicate fruit, and that's a nine-year, seven-month, and that is 112 proof. Um, the third bottle I have is, uh, was a Brent Elliott master distiller bottle. Um, this is a OBSQ. So you have the 60, 60% corn and the Q is fruity, spicy, medium bodied. 
Um, and then this last one is a Benny's pick. It's OBSF, 10 years, six months, um, coming in at 120 proof. So again, you have the higher rye and the F, which is herbal. So if I had to guess, I'm going to guess I'm, that's going to be my least favorite, but you never know. So I'll try not to try not uh, to let my biases show. Mark S., cheers, buddy. What's going on? Um, Jason, Narav, rather the money go to charity, I bet. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. But we can still show our appreciation for him in other ways. So, um, top dog, we got this. That's right. Brad K says, or Brad Key says, OESK is my personal favorite. Pumped for Four Roses pick. Yeah, OESK has been my favorite as well. In fact, um, I'm getting ready to taste the OESK right now. So again, this is a 75% corn, 20% rye, and. It's spicy, full-bodied. But this was a pick I was on with A1, and uh, it was pretty easy decision for me because everything else was kind of herbal and minty, in my opinion, and I just kicked all those out, and this one just really stood out to me. This is just gorgeous. This is a gorgeous whiskey. 10 years, 6 months, uh, 111 proof. I can't remember how how high up it was. So cheers, everybody. If you're drinking some Four Roses, mm. see, that is not spicy to me. It's, um, it's fruity. There's a, a like beautiful cherry note. Really well balanced with spice and oak. Um, but the oak in um, in Four Roses is never overpowering. It's very delicate oak to me, not not like the oak you get on Heaven Hill. Um, Corey says, "Yay, Kim, Four Roses!" <laughs> yeah, cheers to Kim and Mark that are in the house. Um, let's see. Shane Coates. Hey, Lance, just found out we have mutual friends. Lance and Steve. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've been, um, they grew up with my wife, and we went to school at SIU together. So, yeah, I know. I know Lynette and Steve well. And then I coached their son in archery, so. Mm. Golly, that's beautiful, man. I freaking love Four Roses. Four Roses single barrel barrel strengths, one of my favorite pours. And it didn't used to be when you know, earlier in my bourbon journey, I used to not like it. And I didn't understand what people why people went nuts over it. The more I get into bourbon, it's like it's what I gravitate towards, man. I just I just love them. They're so beautifully balanced with spice and fruit. Mm. That OESK is fantastic. All right. You guys sipping on any any four roses tonight? Thank you guys for tuning in, man. I wasn't sure how many we'd have tonight since I had been a while since I went live with everything that was going on, but all right, OBS OBSV. Hmm, this smells great. Um this is the high rye mash bill. Delicate fruit which there is delicate fruit. I'm not getting any of that herbal mintiness that I kind of avoid on Four Roses picks. Some nice caramel in this as well. Mmm. Wow. That's a Benny's pick. That's nine years, seven months. That's 112 proof. I mean, wow, the finish on that is really long. I'm surprised I like that as much as I do. <clears throat> I thought the OESK was going to be the clear winner over that, but for, I guess it is a, like a point higher on the proof. Actually, not even that. But those are almost identical in proof. It's a long finish. All right. 
Glass one and glass two are kind of tied for me, but honestly, glass two um, it is definitely more fruity than glass one. So that that V strain, which I going into this, I thought I always thought the OESKs were pretty fruity to me, um, and the K is supposed to be spicy, full bodied, and I I don't get that a lot on the OESKs. What I was gonna say is the year we picked the OESK, Power of Bourbon, uh, Jason C with Mash and Drum. I, I, there were a couple other channels who got Four Roses picks that year, and we all blind picked OESKs, which is very interesting to me. So Brad saying he uh, really likes the OESK. Um, I I can I can see that. Um, Corey said, hope I can get picked for the Ben holiday pick. That place looks really cool and is fairly close. Oh <clears throat> yeah, man. I'm super excited. We got a pick of that, especially they just came out with that lore, uh, group that did a pick and everybody on whiskey Two went nuts over it. So, um, but we had put in, we were trying to get a Ben holiday pick. I don't know, six months ago. So excited that we got one. Um, Brad Key, oh, it's for orgasmic. <laughs> I can be down with that. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Banks, man, I hope I finally get picked to go on the Ben Holiday trip as well. I've liked everything from them. Yeah, man, I, dude, I hope you get picked too. So I think we're going to be able to, I have to see. I don't know. I, I hope we can get eight, um, eight people on that pick. So, man, that OBSV is still hanging around. I'm going to finish. All right. OBSQ. This is a 10-year, 10-month. Again, higher rye mash bill. And that Q is fruity, spicy, medium. Medium-bodied, so. Oh, this is probably the best nose. Yeah, this is the best nose of the three. Huh. All right. They're all so beautiful, man. That is that. Uh, this is more strawberry than cherry as far as the fruit goes. So it's not quite as dark. <clears throat> but what I really love about this bottle is just the balance and the texture. And it's so concentrating. The flavors are so concentrating on this. Man. Finish is still going. I mean, you just can't go wrong. So, uh, that's beautiful pour. Golly, that's probably that one was probably the darkest to me, man. I'm telling you guys, I I would, I thought the OESK I was on was gonna win hands down. Uh, David Bass, I love OESK. K, yeah, they're so good, man. Prescription bourbons in the house. Cheers, buddy. So good to see all you guys tonight. I hope you're doing well. Are there any uh any releases you guys are really looking forward to? I got to be honest with you guys, man, with the review channel. Um, I'm really enjoying getting on doing lives with you guys and having guests on. And I'm, I'm struggling to find reviews interesting. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> do I really need to review every batch of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and every batch of Larceny? It's like, uh, you know, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs, they're all good. It's the best value in bourbon. You don't need to, me to tell you whether they're good. If you see them, buy them. If they're 65, 70, 80 bucks, um, just splitting hairs anyway. They're all good, man. Um, and there's just, I don't know. If there's something, obviously, that I come across that's like fantastic that I don't think people know about, like dark arts or, but people know about dark arts now. Um, you know, something like that. I'll do a review to let you guys know, but, um, I don't need to do a review on every $50, $60 bourbon that comes out that's just okay. I don't know. I don't know. I'm struggling with it. Um, 
Oh, Jason's going to pour that pick. Yeah, man. Pour that pick. It's fantastic. All right. So now we're going to... This is the one, if I had to guess, I would think I'm not going to like as much. The OBSF. It's 10 years, 6 months. It's 120 proof. Um, but this is the one. The yeast strain F is herbal. So... And the nose does smell herbal. It almost has this like kind of cilantro, oregano kind of nose, a little minty. It's just I'm I don't like the nose as much on that one. David Bass, I agree. OESK isn't spicy to me. Well balanced and more fruit. Yeah. Uh, that's what I think. So I'm not crazy on that. All right. Cheers, everybody. So the palate isn't bad. <clears throat> that's a very, um, the texture and the mouthfeel on that. It's got a really like nice, creamy, velvety mouthfeel. It's, it's, the texture is beautiful. It it is a, a little funky compared to the other three, and that's that that herbalness that um, I'm just not crazy about. But if you're looking for something crazy different, that's it, man. There's a, a little like tobacco um, kind of sherry note on the back end of that. Um, but it's almost like medicinal. It's a little medicinal. Um, this is a Benny's pick from, this was bottled in 2020. So if that tells you anything, I haven't like crushed this bottle. I think this bottle was given to me actually at um, at our first Patreon meetup um, from a guy who wasn't a fan of it. So um, and, and it's not bad. It's just different. It's just different. So that yeast strain, man, um, I'm going to take one more sip. Hmm. It has this um it has this like medicinal note that reminds me of dusty bourbon, kind of like I get on um stag uh twenty three b the stag uh, junior twenty three b there's also a um uh e h Taylor single barrel that Ed brought over um and it has that same dusty kind of note to it. it what I perceive as dusty I don't know if everyone does but it's this like medicinal kind of cherry note to it. It's definitely funky and different. Um, it drinks well below its proof. That's, I think that's the highest proof. No, next to highest proof. The thing that shines with that is, is the mouthfeel and the texture of it. They're all beautiful. Um, but I would think that that bottle is probably going to be the least enjoyed of the, of the bunch that OBSF. So, um, oh, nice. Nick chip sipping on small batch select and OESK pick. Nice. That small batch selects good bottle too, man. That goes uh, overlooked. Um, Corey, I'm not a fan of floral and herbal. Yeah, man. When I go on, um, on the four roses picks, if you've ever been on them, the, if they have a barrel of each, which the ones I've been on have, you, you know, you'll get all recipes. And uh, I just go through, and if it's herbal and minty, it's out. Uh, I'm looking for dark, dense fruit. That's what I want. Uh, Brian Rasky poured the OESK A1 pick. What do you think, Brian? So I'm going to put the OBSF as my as, as last place. And not that it's bad. I actually I actually don't mind it, It's but it is funky. It is funky. So I'm going to work my way back the other way because – 
figuring out which three I like between the OESK, OBSV, and OBSQ is really tough. Uh, Nick Reed sipping on uh, Fry Ranch small batch select. Is that what is that what it is? An OBSK pick. Jeffrey Wack, what's up, man? So Jeff Jeffrey helped us. Um, it was great to meet Jeffrey, by the way. Jeffrey runs um, Hello Again Whiskey Friends YouTube channel. Great channel. Awesome, guys. You should go subscribe to him. But um, I was super excited because he's a member of Barrels for Hope and uh, does a lot for the whiskey community. And um, uh, he was his name was drawn to help us with the dark arts pick. So I got to meet Jeffrey. got to hang out in the hotel room, have some pours with him out to dinner with them um he got to he was subject to to me and my wife bantering all weekend <laughs> and then uh and then we went to dark arts and just had a amazing pick experience and jeffrey was funny because you could tell he was sitting on the couch and he was in love with that oloroso share he basically wasn't even talking he was just just sitting there just enjoying how good that barrel is so Jeffrey, tell me if I'm wrong. He just sat there and, and kicked back and enjoyed it. And he just let the rest of us argue about it. I mean, we were arguing for 20 minutes over these two barrels. Mm. Oh, man. That OBSQ selected by uh, Master Distiller Brent Elliott is fantastic. Oh, Cool thing. When we do our pick at Four Roses, uh, Brent Elliott is going to come on a live stream with us uh, for Barrels for Hope, and he's gonna we're going to taste through the pick. So, um, so that one by him. This was selected by him. Ten year, ten month. Um, it says floral essence on it. Let's see. But OBSQ just says fruity, spicy, medium for me. So, mm. God, it's gorgeous. If I'm looking for it, there is a floral aspect to it. And that floral aspect is, there's a kind of a grapiness to it. Um, there's a floralness I get on uh, on Willet Purple Tops. That's like a grapey kind of um, honeysuckle, honeysuckle. Uh, if you've ever walked by like a honeysuckle bush, um, kind of smells and tastes like that with a little bit of grape and cherry. And that's that's on that pick. It is um, kind of is reminiscent of a Willet Purple Top to me. Man, that's that's good stuff. It's really good stuff. Uh, that's going to be up there. <laughs> Jeffrey Wack, master of the dark arts. <laughs> uh, Brad Key, I was really worried when Jim Rutledge left Four Roses, but Brent Elliott has done a great job. Yeah. I mean, I'm still just as in love with it as I, ever, as I have been. All right, we're going to OBSV here. This, again, is the nine-year, seven-month. 111 proof. Yeah, that is really good, but it does not hold up. Um, the finish on that's really long <clears throat> for the proof. Man, <clears throat> it just fights me a little too much. It's even at the lower proof. Um, so I think I'm going to go the OBSQ ahead of the OBSV. Now I need to do the, um, Earl said OBSF is your jam. Really? <clears throat> All right. Interesting. So yeah, OBS, OBSF, I liked it better than I thought I would. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm surprised I liked it as much as I did. I'll have to bring you a sample of this one. Uh, everyone be sure to like, hit the like button. Yeah. Thanks buddy. Yeah. If you guys could do that, that helps the channel. I'm not good at telling you guys to do that stuff. 
<laughs> uh, Brad Key, medicinal cherry is Diggle. Calumet 14 is terrible, in my opinion. Yeah, a lot of people don't like it. Um, and I, I get it, uh, but um, reminds me of a lot of dusty bourbon, and I'm starting to really love it when I pick it up. All right. OESK. This is the pick I was on. So good, man. Yeah, it's good. You know, where that that lacks against some of these other ones is the finish, though. It, the, the flavor is fantastic, but it doesn't have the, the concentration and the finish um, of the OBSQ that uh, Brent Elliott picked. Um, okay, Brian says he gets a bunch of spice, not much fruit. Well, I mean, that's, that's what the yeast strain says um they say it produces lots of spice full-bodied um doesn't say anything about fruit but i get fruit on it yeah i get like like a strawberry kind of cherry note to it it's delicate that's a that's a beautifully delicate whiskey 111 proof uh, you can definitely tell that that is a lower rye bourbon compared to these other three. It's just not as spicy. I mean, these are basically the OB OESK and the OBSV are nearly the same proof. And the finish on the OBSV is a lot longer due to that rye spice. Yeah, but I don't like the OBSV as much as the OESK. So I'm going to taste the <clears throat> OBS, OBSQ one more time. That OBSQ is on another level. Mm, man. <clears throat> oh man, that's good. So, all right. For me, that's the winner. OBSQ. So I like the higher rye. Um, what was the Q? I forget. Oh, fruity, spicy, medium bodied. I would say that's not medium bodied at all. That's got the the heaviest body of all four that I tasted tonight. Really rich, really concentrated. Um you know, if you got your master distiller picking it, it's probably going to be good. That is a beautiful bottle. And the finish is still going. That's 124 proof. Probably why I like it that much. Um, yeah, I would go OBSQ as my number one. The OESK pick I was on is my number two. OBSV and then OBSF. Um, but I could probably switch the OBSV and OBSF any any day those are really close to me um but i think most people are are not going to like the obsf because of that herbal quality it has so um uh, beautiful flight though man i'm so excited for our pick next week um again if you're in barrels for hope even if you're in the five dollar tier and you're if if you're not in there you should get in there because you're going to have a chance at getting a uh, four roses pick. So, um, and myself, uh, Joshua stuff and whiskey, um, Joe Carter, um, who owns a distillery. Now he's starting a distillery. He will be on that pick. We've, uh, Kim Schwartz will be on that pick. We have some amazing palettes, amazing pick team on that pick. Um, and with Kim's connections and them knowing it's for charity, I'm sure they're going to roll out some incredible barrels for us. I cannot wait to see what we pick. It's going to be so exciting, man. Um, Earl asks, any prospects on Green River pick for Barrels for Hope? Just poured some. Um, yeah, I, no, not yet. But I've told Narav that's one that I would love to do. I would love to do that for um, for Barrels for Hope. And since um, 
you know, this first bottle we're releasing is going to be a hundred dollar bottle. The Elijah Craig barrel proof is going to be a eighty dollar bottle. We need uh, we need some picks that are a little bit uh, more reasonable um, to kind of mix in for our six. So, um, let me see. So, with that being said, next Thursday, I don't know if I'm going to go live because I probably won't go live next Thursday. I'll be driving down to um, Thursday night after work. I'm going to leave, go down to Indy, uh, meet up with Ed, have some pours with Ed and Indy, wake up Friday morning, drive to Louisville, do the Four Roses pick, drive back to Ed's, have a good time uh, Friday night at Ed's place in Indy, and then come back home. So um, I'm going to go. It's going to be down and back really quick because we were just at a pick in Lexington. and. Um, We've got uh, another pick with A1 coming up and our year-end event, and I've got vacation, so. <clears throat> it's, it's too, it's, they got too much to do, man. Too much whiskey to taste. Too many barrels to find for you guys. Brad Key, Four Roses does a great job of pulling different flavors from rye than any other distillery. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, prescription Bourbon says, Loving Green River. Yeah, me too, man. Um. Earl gave me a, what was that, Ingram? I think they're sourcing from Green River. Um, when he told me about it, I thought it was the most gimmicky thing I've ever heard. If I mean, Jefferson's Ocean is gimmicky, but this was even more gimmicky. Instead of, you know, aging stuff on, in the ocean, they're aging it on a river. <laughs> I was like whatever <laughs> and uh he brought it and i actually really loved it um i would love to do a pick of uh i think it's oh ingram or something i would love to do a pick of that because it was really good man um uh this bottle got better tenfold from when you tasted it oh wow okay yeah there you go yeah oh ingram yeah it's so good man it's really a good bottle uh brad key possibilities of peerless or boone county oh boone county is a good one um i we could do boone county the thing is with boone county is we can't we can't have that go through narav at a1 i don't believe and um the benefit of it going through a1 is we get the barrel at wholesale and then we're able to um sell it to you guys for MSRP and then the difference goes to charity. Uh, so like when we did the Nashville barrel company pick, um, we couldn't run that through Narav. We had to do that through them. They did give us a slight discount, but it wasn't as much as it could have been. So we didn't get as much towards charity on that barrel. Um, so the same thing would happen with Boone County. Um, now we could contact them and see if, the, if they will, you know, sell us a barrel at cheaper since it's for charity and we have our 501c3. That's something we could do. That's a good idea because I love Boone County. So thanks for reminding me of that, Brad. Um, Peerless is tough. Peerless is tough because, um, you know, Narav still wants to get good barrels for, for A1 and he should. Um, so, you know, we can't get we can't get all great barrels. Um, and Peerless is one that is really, you know, kind of sought after. Um, and Peerless is an expensive barrel. So, um, and not that we can't do, you know, a few expensive barrels a year, but we've got to even that out. Um, the cash flow part of this with Barrels for Hope is extremely complicated. We talked about it on the Barrels for Hope live stream tonight, but <clears throat> you know, you think if you're not into the barrel game, you think it can't be harder than balancing your checkbook, but it's completely different than balancing your checkbook because it'd be like balancing your checkbook and not knowing when bills are due and not knowing when when income's coming in. So like um, you know, we might we might go taste a barrel from Elijah Craig and they tell us it's going to be there in four months and it shows up in two. And now we've got to have $10,000 to buy the barrel and we didn't have another two months of, um, of cash flow coming in. So, or, or the reverse could happen and we pick it and we think it's going to be two months and it's four months. And so you're constantly 
trying to figure out when to go on picks and to the best of your ability, guess when those picks are going to come in. And then to the best of your ability, guess incoming cash flow when those picks come in. Um, it's extremely complicated and it's harder than anything. So thank God we have, you know, Reggie, who's our treasurer, who's helping us with that, that we can go to and say, Hey, do you think we're okay doing this now? Or should we wait? Um, and, you know, Narav might come to us and say, hey, I've got a peerless pick you can go on next week. And we look and we go, well, we can't have, you know, we can't donate 40000 to charity in July and have 15000 for this barrel if it comes in early. So we got to pass on that pick. It's um constant juggling act. And, um, you know, uh, we we did we did it as we did better than. I think anyone could have done our first year and we're off to a fantastic start our second year. So we've got the team in place where we'll make it happen, but um, it's not as easy as saying, Hey, I want a peerless pick. Can we have it? Because, you know, Narav might get that allocated pick at a certain time. He's got to decide whether he wants to sell it to a store. He's, if he does sell it to us, we have to decide if we have the cash flow to do it at that time. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's very, very complicated. Um, and we have a lot of, a lot of brains working on it constantly. Like today was a lot of calls. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, um, it's, it's fun and it's frustrating at times, but it's interesting. You know, we had, you know, you guys know with four gate, we bought a four gate barrel. We thought that was going to cost 30 grand. And, uh, when it got here, they, we had 30 bottles and so it only cost us 5,500. Um, and then we were able to just sell all those bottles. We didn't give those to our members, but, um, that probably worked out for the better. Um, but, um, you know, a, a, a company might say, yeah, we're, 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 this barrel is going to yield 140 bottles and then you get 30. Uh, I'm not joking. They sent us 30 bottles. Um, We've had bottles, we've had, we've bought barrels and they've went to the wrong store. We've had, uh, barrels that we've bought where the, uh, distributor was about to go out of business and we had to fight to get the barrel from them. Um, it's just been, it's been, it's crazy. It is crazy. Uh, I, I knew that starting a 501c3 charity organization was going to be a lot of work. I didn't know it'd be this much work, but it's totally worth it. When our year end event comes, it's going to be worth it. Um, but it's, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, all right, right. Brian, how about four gate? Um, let's see. Hey, Cheech is in the house. What's up, Cheech? Cheers, buddy. Um, let's see. Could you give option to have barrels for hope members pay annual fee up front? If they, ch if they choose to help with cash flow management. Oh, you know what, Nick, that's a great idea. We can, um, to give you guys a little insight on what we're kind of thinking on the back end, um, we're trying to get away from Patreon. When we started the, the 501c3, when we started Barrels for Hope, um, it, was, it was beneficial to us to use Patreon because everyone in the Whiskey Tube community uses Patreon and everyone's familiar with it and it was easy. But over our first year, the fees they take is absolute robbery. Um, and we need to get away from them because it's going to be another probably eight to 12,000 a year that we'll have for charity that we're not paying to Patreon. Uh, Patreon can suck my ass. They suck, man. Um, they charge so, so much in fees and we've contacted them, told them, you know, we're a charity organization and, and they just, they don't give a fuck. So, Fuck them. <laughs> I'm sorry, but fuck, fuck Patreon. We're trying to get away from them so we don't have to pay them any fees and then we'll just run it through QuickBooks. Um, and I imagine that that is going to come pretty soon. We're trying to, to work out all the details to that. The problem is, as somebody who's a marketing major, from a marketing perspective, anytime you switch platforms, you have some people who don't switch that platform with you and we don't want to lose a lot of members. So... But, you know, if it's 12,000 in fees, we could lose some members and be fine. So we're working on getting that situated um, and, and telling, uh, telling Patreon to suck it. 
Um, let's see. Brad, Lance, you and the rest of the board have done a great job. Incredible year one. Thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, Corey, 8 to 12K. Damn, down with Patreon. Yeah, man. We, you know, we, uh, let's see. We can figure it up real quick. Because we, like, like we always told you guys, we're, 100% transparent, so we don't care. Um, we'll tell you guys everything. So we, we're bringing in about eight grand a month. So multiply that by 12. Yeah, you're looking at, you're looking at, we're get making, we're bringing in about 100,000. Now, we're not making 100,000, right? Because we have to pay for barrels for that. So uh, Patreon fees, I think they come to about 8%, 8 to 10%. So you're looking at eight to 10 grand um going to patreon and they're not you know they're just giving us a platform so it's it's ridiculous if they charge two to three percent that'd be fine but um it's highway robbery uh <laughs> i can suck my ass yep <laughs> uh earl if you build it they will come yeah man i i hope so it just makes me nervous to switch platforms but um but for them not to do anything and knowing that we're giving all the proceeds to charity and still make 10 to 12 grand a year off of us is, is robbery. So we need to get away from them. Um, yeah, hefty royalty fee. It is, man. It is. But, um, you know, it was the easiest thing at the time. And we're just learning and making it better. And it'll be fine. We'll We'll get away from them. And just hopefully all you guys transition with us once we get off Patreon and go to QuickBooks or wherever, whatever we decide to use. Um, so we can keep this thing going because we're, we're going to help a lot of people. So it's a good thing, man. All right, guys, I am at an hour and 11 minutes. So <laughs> mama said Patreon is the devil. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's, I shouldn't say that because there there is some good things about it for especially for channels like mine like Whiskey Tornado that you know if I relied on YouTube I wouldn't make any money and Patreon does help me make more money than I can make on YouTube so for us small creators it it is helpful it helps buy bourbon and lighting equipment and camera equipment and all that stuff so uh, but you get an organization like Barrels for Hope bringing in as much money as it does um, for charity and them not to make any kind of um, adjustments for us and take as much as they do. I, can't, I cannot, I mean, we can't run away from them fast enough. So uh, it's just too much money. It's too much money they're taking for, for no reason. So anyway, that's my soapbox. You guys got me going. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, this was fun. I had a blast. I can't wait to the Four Roses pick. Again, if you want to know more about Barrels for Hope, just go to barrelsforhope.com. Read all about it. You can join the $5 tier. Um, if you want to join the Whiskey Tornado Patreon, just go to Whiskey Tornado. Most of you here are already there, but you can sign join for as little as $2 a month. We have lots of picks coming uh, with Barrels for Hope, and some of those will transfer over to Whiskey Tornado. Uh, we might have some of the white port dark arts pick, which like I said, is a fat kid's dream. I can't, cannot wait for you guys to taste these picks we just did. Um, and then of course the four roses coming up, uh, is going to be fun. So, uh, hope you guys have a wonderful week, have a wonderful weekend, take care of each other, be kind, and, uh, we will see you on the next live stream. Love you guys. Take care, everybody. <laughs>